name's Demo. I've been in this country 35 years. I've, home, I've been homeless now for the last 10 years. Well, marriage split up. Lost the job. Made redundant, lost the job. There's nothing there in the town where I was in uh, Newcastle. So I had to come to this place to try and, to try and work, but it never happened. You know, when I left my marriage, I walked away with just a dog. You know what I mean? That was it. Ever since then, life changed. I've been homeless since, you know? Yeah. My name's Alan Ferguson. I'm 67 years old. I've been on the streets since January the 19th, 2016. I was originally in a flat in Gosport, down in Portsmouth. My landlord gave me three days notice that he wanted to sell the flat. I've moved out within the three days, lost absolutely every possession I own, only to find out that what he'd done was illegal, uh, but it's too late. By then I'm on the street and I can't afford to take him into court and all that. And the flat is still empty now, four years later, the flat is still empty. He still hasn't sold it or filled it up with anything, so that's why I'm here. Augustin Jelev, I'm 30, and this time I've been on the streets for a month. I'm a web developer, and I was foolish enough to think that I can get the same job faster, but it wasn't the case. Five years ago, I was six months in the streets. I was a newcomer in London and I was camped from a job in uh, Kingston. They were paying under the table and they didn't, they didn't even pay and they fired me so I got no proof. I couldn't find another job and that pushed me back to my bad habits. So I started using again and I decided to, to stay on the streets and I was in, a, on, in the trap of the heroin. educating myself. Never had a television. Never had a television. So I educate myself. But I'm kind of going blind now. So I can't read as much. I used to love reading. Education. When it's summertime, I do uh, pavement art as well. You know, pastels. Yeah, I do like a big portrait or something. Uh, poetry or something. Keep this occupied. I'm an artist, I do art, yeah, I do quite well at it as well, so I was, yeah, yeah, and that's, when, I was, when I was in Winchester homeless, I was, I was doing really well, I, I saved up quite a lot of money to buy a caravan which got stolen off me, but um, I ended up getting beaten up one morning, and my face kicked in by these drunkards, and they tore all my artwork up and everything, so I left it and moved on sort of thing, but yeah, that's what I used to do for a living, artwork. from a middle class family. We just had too many wrong choices. Life can be good in Bulgaria, but it's not in compared to here. One hour here equals the salary of one day work in Bulgaria. And the prices of the food is, are the same. In Bulgaria you have to work like a decent job to survive, and here you can survive on the minimum wage. Yeah, it was hard the first time I slept rough, yeah. It is for most people, especially with girls. You know, I've seen a lot of young women sleeping rough. I don't, I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right. It's um, an obstacle you've got to get over in life. You've got to get over it. People say they can't, but you've got to. There's no such way as can't. You've got to. If you want to survive, you've got to. It was like a nightmare. We just don't know what to do. I was wandering the streets and 
no sleeping bag, no nothing. I, actually, I didn't sleep for two days. Like, I didn't know how to do it, where to do it. I was scared that I'm going to be robbed and so on. I slept behind the bus station. I had my little dog with me then. Um, I gave her up two days later and gave her to a good family and what have you, but it was winter, it was January, it was freezing, and no, there was nobody to help. There was absolutely nobody to help. I didn't, I didn't know about all the places that I, I know about now, but that was down in Gosport where there's nothing. Yeah, I mean, and it was quite a problem all, all around the South Coast. I mean, it's not just London, it's the amount of, I've lived in um, Portsmouth, Southampton, Winchester, and now London as a homeless person, and every time I've been there, it's full of homeless people everywhere you go. My fingers are falling off, frostbitten, you know what I mean? I was jab, and I still play the guitar. I was never good anyway, <laughs> probably an improvement. <laughs> uh, I've been robbed four to five times, about four or five times. A couple of drug dealers uh, robbed me and fight, fought me. Um, in Winchester, I've, I've had my face kicked in, all my nose smashed in at seven o'clock in the morning by a, um, a drunkard. I got beat up by seven people in Winchester, drunkards that tore all my artwork up. In Southampton, I was beaten up by three drunkards. In London, I've been beaten up by two drunkards. You know, I've had petrol squeezed on me, squirted on me, lighter petrol squir squirted on me by a group of kids up, up in um, Whitechapel. Yeah, yeah. Someone that took me from the street to their room, tried to, uh, he gave me a roofie and tried to rape me. And he was really trying to push me and kiss me. And with the last amount of power that I had, I pushed him and get off. Well, I nearly lost my life twice. That was bad. I stabbed the side of my head. That was a bad experience. I was in a coma for two months. Couldn't remember nothing. Couldn't remember who done it. To this day, I don't know who done it. But that was a bad experience. Two people pissed out of the head and they hit me with a traffic cone. So I hit them back and then one stabbed me. You know, over something stupid. I nearly lost my sight, you know what I mean? It's so stupid. You've got all these empty buildings in and around London doing nothing. Just all these fat cats just leaving them empty like they could be, you know, charged a five pound a week, even if they only charge five pound a week to a homeless person to have one of them rooms. It's, I just can't understand the logic of leaving it all empty like, you know what I mean? And leaving people like, like us out on the street because it's not like we're idiots, it's not like we're a you know, violent criminals or anything like that. We're just people that have had a hard time in life. Bang, we, we've ended up on the street. You know what I mean? There's a chance that you could help them and help. You know what I mean? But they don't, they'd rather walk by. Not everybody that's on the street is a drug addict or an alcoholic or what have you. People are there because of social problems. You know, a greedy landlord in my case. You know what I mean? Um, war-torn people in the soldiers' cases and what have you and other things. The foreign people coming from war-torn places and things like that. It's all about communication. That's what's missing on the street, you know what I mean? And it can happen to anybody overnight. That's, 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 the, that's the whole crux of the matter. I never in my lifetime thought I would end up on the street. You know, I've seen loads of it through my life. But it can happen overnight to anybody, you know what I mean? And if only people become aware of this, like, you know what I'm saying? That's the age we're living in, yeah, sadly. People need to talk to people, you know what I mean? That's, that's probably the biggest problem we've got is people don't talk to us enough, you know what I'm saying? We, we spend days and days and days and days without talking to anybody, you know what I'm saying? They're quick to drop off things, bless them. We're very grateful for everything that's happened, you know, that they help us with. But I'd rather, I'd rather someone stopped the money and, and chatted with me because then they become aware. Oh yeah, shit, you get good and bad in everyone, don't you? Yeah, I've got a lot of good people. Always like that. Always nice to say hello to me, you know what I mean? Am I okay? You know, of course, of course. There's not a lot of badness out there. There's a lot of good people out there, I tell you the truth. 
and my hungry, they want something to eat, you know, are you okay? You know, that's nice when you hear that. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Well, it's nice just them to acknowledge it, you know what I mean? I'm not just a piece of shit sitting here, waiting to die, you know what I mean? Better off dead if you ask me. Next time you're out and you walk past somebody who's homeless, whether you drop a pound or whether you just stop and say hello and maybe take five minutes or make a special effort to go out and talk to a homeless person that day just and give 10 minutes, 15 minutes of your life just to talk to a homeless person and find out the story. Rather than a pound, I'd rather someone sat down for 15 minutes and listened to a story and listened to what, what's, what's happened. You know what I mean? That way, that's another person that will react, you know what I mean, and help. Yeah. If you want to help a homeless person, don't give him money, speak with him, maybe some food, advices, smile, hug. Just me, I'm a fighter, I just, I won't give in, you know what I mean? And plus I've got a really good friend, you know what I mean? And to, the two of us together, like, you know, we take on anything, you know what I mean? So I've lasted four years so far, you know what I mean, at my age, so I ain't done bad. Life's a fight for all of us, like, you know what I mean? Irrespective of who you are, where you come from, life's a fight, life's a battle, so get on with it. Yeah, yeah. When I look at myself and see what I've become and knowing what I was and what I can become, this gives me power to hope that I'll be a normal person again. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I mean, there's a big thing with the uh, evening stand at the moment. They reckon they're going to try and make homelessness in London a thing of the past in two years. Yeah, all right. Yeah, OK. You know what I mean? It's, it's a bit like the plastic thing in the oceans. It's something that it's, it's, it's gone too far. It's gone too far. This should have been tackled 10, 15 years ago. I don't think we'd be able to change it. I don't think we can change it. Things too far gone. There's a lot of ignorance. There is no darkness, just ignorance. The people just open their eyes. William Shakespeare said that. There is no darkness, but there's ignorance.